Hey, this is Scott. Hey, this is Brian. And you're listening to the Duravent Group Podcast. <laughs> uh, okay. Welcome, everyone, to this 30-minute segment of the Duravent Group Podcast. I am your host, Brian Pessel of Duravent's Chief Financial Officer, here with my co-host, Mr. Scott Schindelbeck, EVP of Sales and Marketing. How are you doing, Scott? I'm awesome, Brian. Excited to be here. It's uh, I've been looking forward to this for, for, for a little while. We've been talking about it for a couple of months now. At least that. Yeah. yeah, seriously for a couple of months. Right. So, But uh, really looking forward to connecting with our customers, our business partners, and our employees on a, on a, on a different level than we have before. I agree. So as, as we kind of explored what we were going to do here, uh, we've, we've seen trends in industry, right? So many of our companies in our space are starting to podcast from trade show floors. Uh, most of us listen to podcasts at least once a week, if not, if not more. So um, what do you want to accomplish as we're doing this in terms of reaching out to um, our customers and partners? I, and I, I think th- th- this kind of media, I think it resonates with a lot of people. With um, I, I think employees in the company want to know a little bit more about what's going on. They might not want to know the wonkiness of, of margins and, and, and different things like that, but they want to know exciting new products. They want to know that we're out in trade shows. They want to know how much our customers love our products. They want to know what they look like in, in some cases, in some applications where there's some really cool designs and stuff. Um, and, and I think this is an interesting, um, this is an interesting format to do that in where it's a little more casual. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, the other, I think really exciting thing about it is being able to highlight some customers. Um, you know, let customers talk about uh, how we've kind of worked together and, um, you know, created sort of a, a, a win-win, you know, both for us and customers. So uh, yeah. I, I always find it interesting talking to you because I learn new things and new terms about finance, the wonkiness <laughs> of, of, of things that are finance. It's true. But it's an economics term. <laughs> it is, it is <laughs> for, for sure. Wonky. But no, I, in, 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 ter- in terms of the customers and the, and the, and the partners, um, I, I, I'm interested in hearing what they want us to talk about and, and, and really what they want to know about Duravent Group about where we came from, where we're going, more importantly, how we can help them succeed and, and, and what we're doing as a, as a company to drive this industry forward. Yeah, no, com- completely agree. And, and, and hopefully for, for customers and for, you know, employees alike that this can be, um, you know, interesting, exciteful, exciting, get people in- excited about what we're doing, what's going on, what's coming next. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, awesome. Hey, so let's get into some of the Duravent history. So, What's interesting is uh, when you and I started at Duravent uh, back in 2017, uh, you know, Duravent was founded in 1956. Yes. Right? And then in 2021, we did the Hart and Cooley acquisition. Now, Hart and Cooley goes back to 1901. Yeah, right? early so, 1900s. So I have, a, I have a, my great grandmother was born in 1900. So I, have, I was sort of relate back to, um, you know, that sort of time in history. And you, you, you understand how different the world was, sure. you know, where innovation was or it wasn't. And you realize that the Hart and Cooley products, the Duraband products to some extent too, but um, they go back to the very early times of HVAC. Sure. One, one of the interesting facts, though, is that the companies that formed Duraband Group, there's nearly, nearly 20 companies that, that we've researched, that, we, that we've figured out have been a part of the Duraband Group history. Um, but they go back to the early 1800s, even 1830s, I read that. When, 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 the, when innovation was at the heart of everything we did back then as well. Um, the first washing machine. Uh, most of the patents that are in the HVAC industry came from Duravent Group companies. Uh, so it, it, I find it very uh, interesting, but also very proud to be a part of that legacy mm-hmm. that we now call Duravent Group. Yeah. It, it's interesting when we go, we, we, we review our patent portfolio periodically with the lawyers, and you'll go through some of these old patent uh, applications and the drawings, and they're very rudimentary. They're, they go back, I mean, again, they're, they're, they're in the early 1900s, some of these were originated. Um, so the history is it's, it's fascinating to sort of see how far this company goes back. And we have one or two. Yeah, and we have one or two. And one, one, <laughs> of, the, what, what, one of the things that, that excites me about the future of this company is we're not stopping. Right. Uh, we, we're we're continuing that legacy as we as we go forward in in, in time. Uh, we have a we have a wonderful design engineering team um, that that has evolved over the course of time. And as we put the companies together back in 2021, as you brought up with the acquisition of Hart and Cooley, the the legacies and the experience and all that knowledge that we have as a company. It, 
not only have we done truly great things, we're doing truly great things. Yeah. And, and if you read some, of, you, you have it uh, in your lap, or I do, but uh, th there's been some historical perspective that, that some of our uh, internal historians has, have written on, on, uh, on Durvet and Harn Cooley. And the, um, give a shout out to Peter Schmitz. Yeah, give a, yes, give a shout sure. out to Peter. Yeah, Peter, our, our resident engineer. Um, who has a passion for history as well. So, yes. um, so some really, really, you know, interesting history and different points in history too. You, you, you think about what life was like in the early 1900s, in the 1920s, the Depression, in the 1940s, and you sort of go on through history. And you know there were sort of unique uh, historical perspectives and things going on at that time in Durban and, and Hart and Cooley were there, um, you know, creating innovation along the way. Right, and it, and it was needs of, of not only industry, but of, of the company. So mm -hmm. at those various periods of time you're talking about, uh, the companies shifted gears and, and went away from producing necessarily their core products and really invented and reinvented themselves uh, to, to help with various efforts throughout throughout history. Yeah. Absolutely. Scott, fast forward to the future a, a little bit. Um, Duravent Group, uh, a climate technology company, um, focused on, you know, clearly focused on innovation, uh, we talked a little bit about our patent portfolio and, and some of our, you know, uh, in engineering expertise and stuff in the last segment. But um, give give your views a little bit on um, where you think the company's going, um, you know, the, the the sort of focus going forward, uh, 2024 and beyond. Sure. Well, Brian, when we joined the company back in 2017, we really were a metal bender, right? So not not the avatar metal benders, the, <laughs> the actual metal benders forming forming chimney and pipe. Uh, forming grills, registers, diffusers. That's a superpower. It, it, it is a superpower, <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, for, for those of you that like Avatar, you, you'll, you'll know the reference. For those that don't, watch watch the new series that's out. There you go. Um, but no, so we, we were a metal bending company, and we are evolving and have evolved over the course of the last seven or eight years um, into more of a climate technology company. And and um, we'll see later in this in this segment, part of our corporate video that, that talks about the future but really, we're looking at making the air we breathe cleaner, safer, and more comfortable. And it's not just bending metal to exhaust bad gas out of a, out of a space, whether it's a building or it's a, or it's a, a, a home. Um, so looking into that future, what, what does that look like? I mean, in, in your mind, sitting in a, in a chief financial officer role, what does is, what is the future of climate technology look like for a company like us. You know, the first thing I, I think that's interesting in that, and, and this is a little bit of a CFO answer to that, is um, when we first started doing strategic planning here, let's just take it to that level, because in strategic planning, you start thinking about what do we have, what are we good at, what are our core competencies, where do we want to be, where's the market growing, how can we be helpful? And in, in I don't know about your history, but in, in my past, uh, I've seen a lot of sort of strategic initiatives uh, create a very pretty uh, book that you put up on a wall or you put up on, on your shelf on a binder somewhere and um, it never gets dusted off and looked at, right? Look at what we made. Yeah. Look at what we made, right? <laughs> we created everybody great. Pat yourself on the back for creating a strategic plan and you never really execute to it. And you make right. excuses why every year here and after that you didn't execute to it. Sure. We've never done that here. Not that mm. everything's always gone according to the plan, but it hasn't. Um, but we have, you know, we've looked at the industry and we've looked at data and we've looked at markets and we've looked at what we're good at and we've set out these plans, and we did 18, we did 20, we refreshed in 23, and and we knew what our capabilities were, and we knew what the industry, what we think we, what the industry needs, and and again, how can we make the industry better, right? You'll right. see a quote um, in, in the video uh, coming up on that, um, but I think I, I think that was the key to it is having the right um, people. Uh, having a strategy, having strong sort of partnership, um, you know, all the way up through sort of our, our investors and ownership um, that uh, support a company who is willing to be bold and innovative and, and you know, sort of evolve uh, as a climate technology company. I mean, what, what, what you're saying really is pulling that entire value chain together, yeah. right? So, so looking at not only our employees and what we do and, and, and the, the, the great work that we do throughout North America. We have facilities in Canada, U.S., and Mexico, 13 or 14, 15 facilities and count distribution centers and manufacturing and innovation centers, et cetera. Right. Um, really looking at that, but, but taking it to our customers, taking it to our selling partners and what, what we can do to, to help them expand their business mm -hmm. and, and offer more products to their customers so that 
not only can they can they grow business, but we can continue to evolve as a, as an HVAC climate technology company. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think, um, and I think, I think what we've done to pull everybody into that process, I think, is really interesting. I mean, I think it's it's asking the opinions of employees. You know, um, uh, there's been a, a much broader range of sort of people who've been brought into the fold just to say, what do you think about this? I think when you take 21, 2200 people that we have in the company and you really value their opinion and their insight, whether it's on a plant floor somewhere, whether it's in the engineering shop um, or whatever it is, but but to, to, you imagine harvesting all those ideas and, and how you can distill that into something that's really meaningful. So you're not making you know so much sort of top-down decisions. You're really involving that. And then you're involving our customers and you're involving our partners. Um, I think that helps us be really innovative. Awesome. So let's take a minute and have a look at what the future looks like in this Duravent Group corporate video. Roll it. All of us spend a good chunk of our day inside somewhere. And climate technology is the art and science of air moving around buildings. It's how we heat, it's how we vent, it's how we cool, it's how we build, it's how we filter the air that we breathe. Duravent's products really are everywhere in almost every aspect of your life. You'll generally see a grill, but most of the Duravent products are hidden in the walls. Climate technology to Duravent means taking the air that we breathe and making it cleaner, safer, and more comfortable. We have over 100 years of expertise with 14 brands distributed in over 10,000 locations across North America. And we make sure the products that we develop live up to what the brand's name is worth. And innovation runs through the entire value chain. We're all aware climate is evolving and we're part of that. The products that we do will meet those requirements moving forward. So my goal with my team is making sure that the product we design is safe, easy to install, but at the same time, the product will last a lifetime. This is something you put in place for 20, 25 years, and it just works well every single day. And that's the kind of sustainability that you need. In the old days, they made machines that lasted forever. And I believe here, they use the best quality materials, the best quality processes to build those materials to the specs needed for manufacturing. It starts with the culture. Outstanding, amazing people that we work with every day. I think Duravent has challenged the industry to be better. Everything we do, we do with integrity, quality, and a sense of teamwork. Climate technology, it's the future of the world. And as innovators in the industry, it's our job and our role to build for the future. Climate technology touches all aspects of our life. Our goal here at Duravent is to help keep you, your family, and your friends safe and secure wherever you live, work, learn and play. So I, I know making that video was fun mm -hmm. and it was exciting and to see the finished product gives certain emotions. Mm -hmm. what, what, what do you feel now, a year and a half later, re-watching that video, seeing the vision of where we thought we'd go, mm -hmm. where we are, and now the new journey going forward? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the funny thing about that is um, how that ended up coming together, um, the, the, the little, the tones at the end, sort of the three chords that, that play at the end of that, I still sort of get chills when I listen to that because th there, was, there was a lot of um, excitement and sort of passion that went into doing that. It, I, I felt like it was more than just sort of a, a, a commercial or a marketing thing. There, there, was, there was some belief and passion in... Uh, what this company can do and what this company can be, and I still believe that, and I, and I, I believe that you know we're still on that path, and uh, we're, we're being true to that journey. And it's 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 still, uh, it, it's still, you know, it, it still elicits an emotional response. Uh, that's what watch it. Yeah, that's what feels good to it's me great. because yeah. the message hasn't changed. Yeah, it's 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 and and that's the consistency that we've had since. 2017 and really since 1901, right. the consistency of what we do as an organization and, and where, where we're headed. Um, some some key some key things that, that I pull out of that video, uh, we've already mentioned a couple of them. One was when, when you said Duravent has challenged the industry to continue to get better. Right? That, that's mm -hmm. something that I think really resounds with us as a leadership team, but also with our employees. Mm -hmm. And as I talk to customers throughout US and Canada, um, at trade shows or when, when I'm out visiting them, 
they have that same feeling. Mm-hmm. And, and it's really that, that we're helping drive the industry forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, um, I, I was thinking, t- to that point, I was thinking about something that I saw. It was one of the trade shows recently. HPB, it might have been. Um, but there, in some of the little reels and some of the little clips that we had, there, there was a customer, one of our customers on there mm-hmm. who was, and I, 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 I'll have to go back and look at uh, who it was exactly, but there was just, there was an excitement that he was sort of exploring and explaining about his partnership with Duravent, how the products work, how there's a great partnership to help him grow his business, because he was a family business owner. Mm-hmm. And, and um, you know, those kind of things, sort of making the industry better and, and, and exploring those partnerships, uh, you know, that, that it just resonated with me. It says, we're, we're doing what we said we we're going to do. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. So one of the other things that, that popped out to me when I, when I watched the video is uh, a quote from Eric DeFour. Eric is our vice president of design and engineering, innovation and engineering yeah. here at Duravent Group. And I'm going to read it so I get it right. My goal with my team is making sure, and it's not a French accent, so I apologize, but <laughs> with my team is making sure the products we design are safe, easier to install, and at the same time, last a lifetime. What does that conjure up inside of you when you, when, when you hear that kind of language and talk from the leader of our engineering design department? I, I, I like um, it, it, it. It's a sense of sort of quality, responsibility, and, and, and partnership, right? You want, you want to make things. Uh, ultimately, our products go to installers, and the installers want to have, you know, efficiently install things. Consumers want to know they're safe, um, and, and the fact that um, that was his fairly organic quote, I think, actually. I'm not sure that was scripted. Right. I think that one was a very organic quote. Is um, you know, I just I think says a lot about how the organization uh, thinks about his products. Right. Another thing that jumped out to me was when our CEO, Simon Davis, mentioned the magnitude of what we've grown into. Mm-hmm. More than 100 years of expertise. If we think about those legacy companies, it's almost 200 years. Mm-hmm. Of, of expertise, yeah, right. 14 brands distributed in over 10,000 locations throughout North America. Mm-hmm. And we also have partners that sell over in Asia Pacific and mm-hmm. over in Europe as well. Right. But just, I mean, we're, we're primarily a, a centric North American uh, brand and, mm-hmm. and, and our sales are primarily here. Yeah. But it speaks to the magnitude of what the Duravent Group has accomplished mm-hmm. over the years. Yeah. As, we, um, as we wrap this up, um, our first podcast, um, want to uh, thank everybody for joining us. Um, you know, th- this being our first podcast, I think we will make sure we sort of evolve the content. We try to keep things interesting. Um, and we, uh, we hope that you all uh, uh, stick with us uh, for the next time. Yeah, so th- this first podcast is really about kind of the history and where we're going as a company. Uh, we're going to get to a segment here in, in a moment where we ask your opinions and what kind of topics you want to hear from us. Uh, as we as we continue our podcast series. So thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thanks. So we want to hear your ideas. What do you want to hear from the Duravent Group podcast? Uh, ideas about the company, about the product, about the future, about any kind of wonky topics that our CFO and I want to talk about. <laughs> Who do you want to see uh, from our company? Do you need to connect a, a, a face with a name or a voice on the phone? Let us know. Send us your input. Thanks.